Next is Project Nira, instant interactive real-time access to multi-gigabyte sized 3D assets on any device. Presenting are Arash Kasami and Andrew Johnson from DRaster Incorporated and Nira.app. Arash co-founded DRaster Incorporated, a software company specializing in making 3D more accessible to everyone. Prior to this, he has had various roles ranging from software developer, animator, and instructor. He currently resides in Irvine, California with his wife and six-year-old son. Andrew is also a co-founder of DRaster and has enjoyed designing and programming game and VFX pipeline tools for as long as he can remember. He's worked at Autodesk and has developed custom studio tools for over a decade. Please join me in welcoming Arash and Andrew to the real-time live stage. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Arash, and this is Andy, and it's Hello. an honor to be here with you all tonight. We're going to be showing a new production tool we're developing called Nira. So here we have a list of 3D files, and you can click on any one of them, and within seconds, load the file in full 3D. This first file we're looking at was created in ZBrush, and it was uploaded as a native 3 gigabyte ZBrush file. It's 175 million triangles and loaded within five seconds. This is rendering at 60 frames per second, all within a web browser. It can be any web browser, including your phone. I'll mention that some of the members of the jury are also connected to a server we have in New York and LA using an iPad. This asset looks cool, but we want to see how far we can go with triangle count. This next file has one billion triangles, actually a little bit more than that. So why is this useful? In the early stages of design, artists typically create very detailed and heavy 3D models using sculpting applications, 3D scanners, photogrammetry tools, or by kit bashing. They're not concerning themselves with poly count, topology, or UVs. The resulting geometry can be quite large and messy, but it's still very useful to view the assets in real time as we're doing here. Let's take a look at some other files. This next file is two gigabytes and includes 24 8K UDIM textures. Texture resolution can be up to 32K, and we'll show that later in the presentation. We also wanted to help with finding issues with the mesh or animation by including inspection and debugging tools. We can do solo rendering on the different passes, we can inspect all the UVs. And we can check for stretching or missing UVs and do CAD-like exploded views. There's a host of other mesh and animation debugging tools, but we don't have a lot of time, so we'll show those later. Uh, I'll mention where. In addition to using the near render, you can switch to other renders. For example, I can switch to Redshift and render the same asset in Redshift as well. This is useful for when you have complicated shading networks that don't fit within the simple PBR workflow or when you want to review the assets in its final environment. We're also integrating with real-time engines. Here we can load another asset originally created in Maya but finished in Unity. So here again, this pipeline can be used to review assets at any stage of the pipeline from beginning to end. So how does all this work? There's a GPU-based server that loads the asset locally from storage and renders it to an H.264 video stream and gets transmitted to the client this all happens very quickly, so there's very little perceivable latency. Our approach avoids using mesh decimation, lossy compression, quantization of vertex position, or imposing delays for LEDs to stream in while changing views. In other words, the Nero viewer is super fast and accurate without sacrificing the fidelity of the geometry or textures, and also allows for viewing the assets exactly as they'll appear in a third party or proprietary render. Additionally, the underlying asset data is never sent to the client device, protecting it from piracy and misuse. The goal was to have the convenience and portability of the web for production quality assets without the inherent compromises of downloading and rendering on the client device. This can be used remotely across the world or on-premise in an air gap studio for extra security. This approach also allows for version tracking as assets are updated. Some feedback was given to the artist in this file using the built-in markup tools. Since we're low on time, we made the request to change this beforehand, so let's exit out of market mode and load the newest versions of the asset. Now, when we refer back to the markups, we can compare the changes with any previous versions using the AB white tool. This is so much better than using screenshots. Once we are happy with the changes, we can set the markups as resolved and set the asset as approved. Just a quick note on asset uh, uploads. Native formats are supported, so there's no need to export or manage another intermediate format. Uh, popular f exchange file types like OBJ, Alembic, USD, FBX, IFC, and many, many others are also supported. 
Files are ingested by dragging and dropping into the browser, or you can use the API for integration with other production and version control tools. There is also support for animation. This is a gorgeous animation done by our friends at Ziva Dynamics using their awesome muscle simulation plugin for Maya. This file is quite entertaining to look at from every angle to see all the wrinkles and muscle bulges. Let's take a look at a heavier animation. I'll take over controls while Andy gets set up with a tablet. Yeah, this is this is a fun file. Actually, it's uh, a, about a thousand characters, all uniquely animated. The asset itself is uh, over 150 gigabytes, and you can see I can pause it uh, and scrub through it. Um, as you can imagine, over time, as you use Nira, you'll be collecting a nice um, collection of assets that you can automatically download, or I'm sorry, that you can download, or you can automatically have it converted to other formats like GLTF with automatic texture channel packing or USDZ for uh, quick look. Um, we also wanted to help you integrate your assets into other tools. So this file here was originally uploaded as a Maya file, and I can just quickly uh, drag it into 3ds Max and have it converted for that as well. Same thing with this. Uh, this was, again, a Maya file uploaded, and it'll automatically convert the materials and textures for you and bring it right into 3ds Max. Um, so we're integrating with other DCs as well. Uh, that's it for me. I'm going to see how Annie's doing with the tablet. So yeah, I'm just moving the tablet around here. And as you can see, I can just kind of get in there, take a close look. And then now what I can do is switch to an experimental thing we've been playing with, which is AR mode. Um, and now we can see that against the backdrop of the real world. And again, I can just kind of get in there and look at that one billion triangle mesh in AR. And just a reminder, this is happening still inside of a web browser. And this is over some kind of challenging Wi-Fi conditions. So that's about it. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone. I wanted to thank our generous hardware sponsor, in particular, uh, uh, Box, yep. for providing the machines that we use for this. Everything you saw today was being run on a single dual GPU server. I also want to thank all the generous artists for providing the assets that you've seen here today. That was greatly appreciated. And one last thing, we'll be at Appy Hour tomorrow, so come check us out. We'll have some tablets. You can come play, it, play around with Nira on that. Thanks again. And you can also find us on Nira.app. Thank you.